Today, draft guidance has been published by the World Health Organization stating the daily allowance for a person's sugar intake should be halved in an attempt to avoid mounting health problems. This comes after Chief Medical Officer Dame Sally Davies said that increasing the price of certain products like fruit juice and fizzy drinks could be the only way of curbing high obesity rates. Well, we are joined by Bethany Walton, once dubbed Britain's fattest teen, who says a so-called sugar tax wouldn't stop her from gaining weight, and Dr Chris, who would like to see sugary foods costing more with cheaper fruit and veg. And welcome both. Welcome. Thank you for coming welcome. today. Morning. So what Sally Davis actually said, she told a committee of MPs um, that research will find sugar is addictive, that we may need to introduce a sugar tax. Food industry said it was working on reducing sugar in products. She then went on to say we have a generation of children who, because they're overweight, uh, mm. their, their lack of activity, may well not live as long as my generation. They'll be the first generation that live less, and that is of great concern. She said being overweight has been normalised. She also went on to say that I worry that we've resized the woman's dress size so that a size 14 now was a size 12 when I was a student. We have to find a way not of ostracising people who are obese and making them feel bad about themselves, but somehow of helping them to understand this is pathological and will cause them harm. And in the, in the papers uh, today, a piece of, uh, piece of information uh, that says the number of obese British adults is expected to double from one in four to one in two by 2050, costing the economy up to £50 billion pounds a year. <laughs> so would a sugar tax help beat the obesity crisis? Um, I don't think necessarily because, I mean, like with fizzy drinks bottles and everything, there's often more than one portion inside each bottle and the calorie labelled kind of what it tells you, the dietary information, often tells you what's in one portion. So people are often tricked into kind of thinking, oh, I'm only having 110 calories, when actually having 220. Do so you think the labelling is deceiving? Yeah, I do. So yeah. let's talk about yours because you you said you struggled with your weight from being a toddler, from being teeny tiny. Yeah, I, I kind of put a stone on every year, and then unfortunately my grandmother died, and I put six stone in one year on. But you say by the time you were six, you were eight stone. Yeah. Why? I don't know really. Um, I never really ate all that many sugary foods. My mum always gave me a good diet, uh, but it was quantity. I never felt full. Um, my surgeon informed me that um, he said it's most likely a problem between my stomach and my brain to do with the hormonal message that's sent to say that you're full, stop eating, you know. So, and so what about exercise? Did you ever exercise? Yeah, I walked the dog with my mum quite often. Yeah. Um, I went to PE and everything just as much as the other kids. It's just I was intaking a lot more mm. than I should have been. And so you eventually had the gastric band operation yeah, I had a gastric sleeve. It's uh, what they take 90% away of your stom stomach away. And after having that, you lost 13 stone. Then. Yeah, I lost 13. But like you said, I guess it's, you know, you lost the 13 stone from doing that, but then went on to, to gain again, didn't you? Yeah, I've put four stone back on, but I've kind of realised through losing weight that after you've lost the weight, the problem of you still, still eating yes. is still there. You have to really challenge yourself and, and you know, kind of think, why am I eating? Why do I feel the need to come for eat? So it's an emotional issue, not a financial issue. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and how have you managed to continue to eat and be overweight with a teeny stomach? Uh, after you have the gastric sleeve, unfortunately it's not a permanent solution. It does stretch back a little bit. I can kind of eat probably about half of what my partner eats. Um, it depends on the texture. Kind of more stodgy foods make me feel fuller and sometimes mm. they get stuck. Um, and so can, I, I want to be personal here and tell me to fine. stop if I am being, but no, I think it's, it's, it's a fascinating area, mm. uh, especially because it's such an expensive area. Mm. Is your partner overweight? No, he's not. No, so, so is it portion sizes at home, do you think, that are an ongoing problem, continuing problem? But at the moment? Yeah. Um, obviously, because my stomach isn't as restricted as it was, I, it takes more for me to be full, because obviously I've got more volume in my stomach. Mm. Mm. So, Chris, it's a complicated issue. We've discussed this before. Um, and so is a straightforward sugar tax going, going to, to help someone like Bethany? Well, I mean, this whole area is, is very interesting. It's great this has happened. It's going to raise the awareness of sugar in diet across the nation. And, you know, Bethany was talking about the, the labels and portion size, etc. Look, get, get, get a food, get a drink, get a chocolate bar, and look at the label, right? Now, when you read the label, it will give you grams of sugar, right, you know, in, in that container. 
Now, that means nothing to anybody, but divide that by four, and that will tell you how many teaspoons of sugar are in that drink okay. or chocolate bar. So, for example, you know, a soft, fizzy drink, right, containing um, 35 grams of sugar, that is nine teaspoons of sugar wow. in that one can. Then Gosh, that's a really clever trick to be able to work it out, because you're right, that actually means something. Grams then. divided by four. four. And here we've got with the chocolate bars, different ones. Uh, these contain 27 grams. What does that mean? That is seven teaspoons of sugar. Well, the daily allowance for a person, this is in today's Telegraph, the daily allowance for a person's intake should be halved to six teaspoons. This yeah. is what the World Health Organization has right. said. Yeah. So by eating that chocolate bar well or over. drinking that drink yeah. with those, those two pieces of consumption, you're already yeah. twice yeah. Your, your limit. Yeah. And this Beyond is that. I, I know, but you know, these organisations, they'll set these sort of these targets, which are really quite unrealistic in the real world, but if you become aware of reading the labels, and when you read a label, look at the ingredients. Mm. Every item has to have a list because of Because there's also things that are sugar that are called different things. Well, well, going through the ingredients, if you see sugar in the first three of the ingredients, stay clear because they're they're putting quantity order aren't yeah, they yeah, so yeah. what comes first is the is I the mean, most common in the drink now stay sugar. clear if you have a if you have a, a weight concern but i mean we're fine as we're fine as treats but the thing is that exactly. where whereas it used to be once again we've said this a number of times it used to be a, a, an extraordinary sight to see a, a larger person walking down the street yeah. now it's yeah. the norm yeah yeah and with that first three yeah, that's important because if you may not see the word sugar but you might see a word that ends in O-S-E. Sucrose, dextrose, okay, maltose, yeah. they're sugars, they're right? They're sugars also. Do, what do you think would help? And we've heard what Dame Sally Davis has said. So what, what do you think would help? Well, with the sugar tax? With or... anything to, to stop our nation being overweight. What would help you? I think better education in schools. Mm. Um, to generally just look after yourself properly, <coughs> learn how to cook yourself a proper meal, a balanced meal. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was at school and, and we had cookery lessons, we learned how to cook apple pie and pizzas and things like that. And they're just not, it's not, it's not enough But as far knowledge. as you were concerned, you say to sort of teach it in school, but I reiterate that point we made earlier, by the time you were six, you were eight stone. So it was already, it has already started then. Yeah, so your already, education had only just started. Yeah. How were you going to be helped at school? I don't know. And, and Bethany's in a situation now where, you know, she's overweight, you know, and, and she accepts it. She's not insulted <laughs> by me talking this way, are you? Um, no. But you know, she needs to do more activity, mm. which is difficult when you're overweight. Now, if you remember Charlie Ward that we had on the show, mm. our super slimmer, lost yes, 30 yeah. or so on, uh, I had to take him for a walk Little every steps. single day. But you've, so you said walking. you've got the dog or your mum's dog, whatever, so that kind of walking, that activity is something that, that mm. is easier to do, I guess, than maybe going to the gym or something yeah. like that. That's yeah, more true. realistic. Yeah, I try to get out as often as I can, but, but obviously because my quantity levels with my food are creeping up a little bit because my stomach has stretched, mm. I can eat more. But you're educated now. Yeah. You know now. You know yeah. the right things to eat and that you don't eat, so you, you're, you're aware of that now. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to make it... I don't want to... I mean, you've come here today and, yeah. and, and I don't want to make it look like we're, you know, sort of beating <laughs> with a stick on behalf oh, of everybody. No, I mean, no. It's fascinating because you're so yeah. open and honest yeah. about it, which is why I feel that we can ask you these personal yeah. questions because you will be answering them on behalf of a lot of people yeah. <laughs> but but as uh, as far as portion sizes are concerned you say you could eat more would you would you and I'm only asking this because it's fascinating um, why why do you eat to be full why don't you why don't you think right that's my portion and I'll stop when I've eaten it I don't know really I don't know I think a lot of people comfort eat Mm. Um, and for a long time, food for me was a comfort. Mm. Um, and it, it, it really is kind of getting in the right mindset to kind of almost convert your brain to find mm. something else yes. Yes. to to make you feel better, you know. And, and there's real comfort that. from that, because you know, when, when the sugar level rises, it increases the release of serotonin from the brain, which is a sort of feel-good, happy yeah. chemical, mm. you know. Um, also released in exercise, however. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right, yeah. absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I would like Bethany to go away from me and do 30 minutes walk every day, come rain or shine. There's no such thing as bad weather, <laughs> just bad clothing. Right? <laughs> I need to do it. As far <laughs> as, uh, uh, Chris, as far, as far as this particular debate is concerned, I mean, it's in all the papers mm. and it's being discussed. It's been discussed before. These health warnings really don't make any difference at all, do they? Yeah, I think, see, when you look at, say, the fat issue, 
That has changed over the past five years. You know, you're seeing the, the low-fat foods, the light foods, etc. We've become more aware of fat. Well, we're not getting any thinner. Well, no. Why? Because sugar is there and we're not being very active. And also, sugar... when things say low fat, isn't that kind of code for we'll just whack a load of sugar in there? Yeah, now when you look, the, the food industry are out there to sell products. They want your money, right? So if you're not buying the fatty products, they're making light, low fat products. And what are they doing? You take the fat out, you lose the taste, you lose the texture. So they add sugar, which increases taste, texture, and bulking. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you look at a light product, a light mayonnaise, they oh, that's good, low calorie. No, it's low in fat, but not low in calories. Mm. Read the label. Mm. <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming in. Thank today. you. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you, Chris. Thank uh, you. Jeff's in the hub.